Let me start with this statement. Modern clinical medicine is systematically killing women. Now let that sink in for a second. It's a controversial take. How can medicine kill when it's the very instrument which ensures our survival? I'm going to begin with a scenario that I think a lot of women can relate to. It's that time of the month, your back, your neck, your arms, your legs, they all hurt for inexplicable reasons. You have a slight headache, you feel queasy, you feel nauseous. And then you feel the dull pain emanating from your abdomen. It's a pain that's very difficult to describe. It's not gnawing, it's not stabbing. So you're forced to lie down. You reach for the tea, you reach for the hot water bottle, and maybe that painkiller. This continues for 30 years. Girls, women, and anybody that menstruates will experience premenstrual syndrome. Yet, have you ever wondered why there's still no cure to treat for this pain? This is something which infuriates me, that when you do a search on WebMD, it suggests for the following treatments. A massage, taking a hot bath, Avoiding alcohol and caffeine, and most appallingly, try to manage your stress as if our pain is by our own faults. Sure, there's always painkillers, but have you ever wondered about the ramifications for taking painkillers every single month for 30 years? Liver cancer, hepatitis, liver failure. The demand on your body is huge. And when finally, when everything else fails, there is always hysterectomy, the surgical removal of the uterus. All of this, all of this just to alleviate pain. On the other hand, there are currently on the market four different types of medication to treat for erectile dysfunction, which is non-life-threatening, causes no further complications, and does not result in chronic pain. According to a research roundup, there are about as five times as many studies being done on ED than there are on premenstrual syndrome. And the reason for this lack of funding? Well, PMS doesn't exist. The causes are too unclear, and it's just simply not a priority. So there's a gap in modern clinical medicine. And this health gap is hidden from the dominant social discourse when we talk about inequality. Science has this fabulous reputation of being unbiased, but have you ever thought about the systematic exclusion of women from clinical trials? And what about distinctive data separating male and female patients? Now, clinical trials to test for medications actually started in the 18th century with Scurvy and Dr. James Lind. And mass production of medication began in the 19th century. But it wasn't until 1990s, which was only 30 years ago, when women were actually included in these clinical studies. That's very scary. Considering how the majority of the medications that we take today were studied and tested without women participation. So for things like toxicity, dosage, efficacy, we don't truly know their effect on women. And the reason why women were excluded from clinical trials? Well, female hormones were deemed harder to control for than male hormones. So in the interest of saving a few bucks, scientists have decided to just exclude women in general instead of jeopardizing their pristine male results. So is it apt for me to say that this is an act of negligence, that we're purposefully ignoring the well-being, the health, and the lives of half of the world's population. More insidiously, when women were actually included in studies, it was done during their early follicular phase when female hormone levels most resemble that of male hormone levels. So the next time when you take a pill, you ask yourself this question, does this pill really work for me? Or does it only work effectively during one specific window of my cycle? Aside from ineffective medication, we have the case of atypical symptoms. So when we say atypical, we usually think about um, the phrasing, you know, these symptoms are not typical and thus we are not liable for any misdiagnoses. But what if these symptoms are actually typical? That they're only deemed atypical because they haven't yet been studied on demographic that is not male, middle-aged, and cisgendered. In women, 
especially young women. Heart attack is such an example. It manifests in a highly different manner. A typical heart attack could be something like the numbing of the left side of your body, you know, chest pains, maybe a slight headache. But in women, actually, what you get is extreme stomach pain, migraines, and nausea. And because these symptoms are deemed atypical, heart attacks actually go undiagnosed in a lot of women. When these heart attacks go undiagnosed, which can lead to cardiac complications, and in some cases, death. So when I say that modern clinical medicine is systematically killing women, it's because clinical medicine has routinely sidelined and ignored women's health needs. The drugs don't work. The symptoms go undiagnosed. Women are told to deal with it. Women are socialized to ingrain this notion of suffering into our psyche. Modern clinical medicine may have helped us extend our lifetime, but modern clinical medicine also tells us that women's health is just not a priority. So unless we address this health gap, unless we acknowledge that more work needs to be done, women will continue to suffer. Thank you.